another episode of the Art Bros with your favorite Art Bros. Me, Mike. Fancy Dave, as always. Hey. And Patrick. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. I'm Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and today, we are talking about this fabulous carcass of beef by this artist named, and I hope Haim. I'm pronouncing it, Haim. Haim Soutine, all right. Uh, so Haim Soutine, uh, look at I his- I was you- saying, I was saying Chaim. Oh man, I was just like <laughs> full American on that. Chaim Soutine. Chaim Soutine. Chaim Soutine. It's so time. Chaim. Yeah, God, anyways. Anyway, uh, anyway, anyway. Yeah, go on his Wikipedia page, and if you see a picture of him, he looks just like Jeff Goldblum, honestly. He looks like he could be related to Jeff Goldblum. In my opinion, yeah. Oh, uh, so this one, carcass of beef. Fancy Dave, give me the specs on this guy. Like, what are we looking at? Give me the the dates and whatnot. Oh, uh, dates made. Let's see here. 1923. Oh. Mm-hmm. Completed in 1924. Uh, we got two dates then. Yes. Well, 23 or 24. All right. Expressionist piece, still life, done in oil on canvas, 140 by 107 centimeters. Okay, and what do we have? What's the subject matter? It's a carcass of beef. Yes. That's literally what it is. Now, mind you, um, Chaim Soutine, he was, you know, he doesn't always do carcasses of beef, but this is a period of time where he did that for like 10 years straight. Yeah, uh, he did like uh, beef, uh, dead animals, chickens. Like, uh, a lot of a very morbid kind of things. His neighbors didn't really like him. No. And I'm not they, uh, from, from what I read, the, the, the neighbors <laughs> called the cops on him while he was making this piece because of the smell. Oh, I heard I heard that um, some of the blood, because he, he used to get it fresh, some of the blood was coming out of his door. Mm-hmm. And uh, a neighbor saw and ran outside and was like, call the cops. Somebody killed Hyam. Or Dude. Shyam. Oh, so Oh, my God. Yeah, so so yeah, this this guy was a was a little little um odd. Odd. Yeah, in, in the well, name of art. eccentric. <laughs> a maverick. Sure. <laughs> Here's a maverick. Yeah. So, uh what we have here is the beginnings of the abstract expressionist stuff. It's expressionist right now. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit abstract, um done in a time when painting was really going through a sort of Renaissance, I would say. Another another type of renaissance. Because last episode, we were talking about Paul Cezanne. We were talking about how um, we take something like painting and focus on the forms and the colors and the shapes of a still life rather than the actual elements of painting like the technique and whatnot. So, yeah. uh, and then we have this. It's just it's in the same vein. You know, We have what's obviously a carcass of meat, uh, very crudely done. Could that be on purpose? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's expressionist, so that's part of the point, just to get that primal kind of look at it, like it's done at the spur of the moment in a way. Right. Uh, well, personally, what I like about this artist, and as you can see in his painting, um, well, you can't really get the texture, but uh, the artist used like very thick globs of paint to get this uh, very interesting texture with all his paintings. He also they... focused a lot on the color. and this is very look. It looks very gooey. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's so real, and it's so it's so it's so made in a way to make it look as real as possible by like not being so true to it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like he could have made it look just like a carcass of beef would look, you know, realistically. But that wouldn't have done justice to like how crude and raw and gooey it was. Like the way he painted it just does so much justice to that. Like I, I don't see a traditional carcass. I see like. Death. Yeah, like I, I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, Ugh. I'll see, I'll see yeah. meat. I'll see meat. <laughs> meat, American. I'll see delicious meat. <laughs> Shame, Soutine. Like, put that on a barbecue. <laughs> Slash right. barbecue on there. Go bring, you know, go bring it, the neighbors over. This Cham guy really knew what he was doing. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> it must have been a meat salesman or something. <laughs> Patrick. Shame knows his meat. When you look at this you know, thing, it's real good. <laughs> what do you think about when, when you look at this thing, man? As I know, an I artist, mean, it's so it's like it's so direct, like it's so direct. Like I, like when I look at this, like uh uh, it's just it reminds me a lot of Francis Bacon, but like the like the whole tone of like this like like you guys are saying like textural and color based. It's so visceral, you know. It's so like 
bloody and like and so like you just feel like you know if you were to touch it you'd just be like so like contaminated by like what you're looking at you know because it's just like huh no go ahead go ahead okay all right it's just because there's such like a, there's such a huge border between like what is the meat and like what is the area it's in you know it's just like because like you get like that hard blue with that black and almost in a sense like it, it gives it like a sense of presence that that black you know it like defines that's there mm-hmm. and then you have like in that and that like in that carcass you have all those yeah, like red yellow and oranges it's and it just like yeah yeah it just like there's such again like that there's like that such high contrast you know where it just like it it literally puts like the two objects i feel like on two different planes you know like because one is just is almost like it's non-existent on the other because you look at the blue it's it's even though it is very crude it's blue like it's so blue Mm -hmm. And then you look at the carcass, it's just like, it's all mangled and red and orange and all that. So it's just, and, you know, there is some, like, like, interaction going with them both because in the bottom left screen, you know, it it starts to get into, like, that deep red, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just nice because, like, it's, when you're, when you're looking at a photo, like, like, oh, no, not a photo, like a painting like, like this, the subject matter is so I feel like it's so direct, you know. And like, uh, I was gonna I was gonna mention that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so like it's so upfront, but at the same time, like like Dave said, I mean, like it's it's expressionism, you know. It's yeah. it's like in a way it's abstract, and it it's. Exp- at- I'll go ahead. Say, and, and I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like it's 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 abstract through the artist's te- technique. Like his brush strokes, they're like thick, and he put that oil on heavy. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like it, it's like that's the expression going on here. And for me, the expression also has to do with the subject matter. It's like we can talk about how beautiful this this carcass of meat looks, ironically, um, but we also can't ignore the fact that this dude in 1924 decided to paint a carcass of meat. You know, like of all the things to paint a still, if it was a carcass of meat, what is he trying to do? I think he's trying to get us up front. He wants us to confront our mortality, honestly. But we look at this, we we think of like uh, we think of um, you know death. We think of we think of uh, life also because people eat this. People eat it to sustain life. Um, the way that the the piece just kind of makes you up front and deal with like death and like this morbidness of of the the beef carcass. It's just beautiful the way it's done. I don't know how to. I'm really excited. <laughs> Dude, I'm just rocking a hard one right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, man. Like, I think of this, and I just see an artist that doesn't really shy away from the more the like morbidity of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. He he's like, this is how it is. This is how um, this is like. You know, we're all gonna die. Deal with it. I get that. That's what I get from it. No, seriously, that's what I get from it. It's wonderfully icky. Yeah, icky. That's a good word. It's wonderful, icky. Yeah. Super art art critic. Yeah. <laughs> I feel about yeah. this. Oh, icky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a bunch of people were were doing I, that. Um, yeah, yeah. But I I wonder. I'm wondering if this is the one that sold for like a record. I can't really remember. Um, oh, well, anyways. Um, now, um, the same artist actually has sold pieces uh, from this series actually. Um, for millions of dollars, um, really? we're talking like thirteen million dollars. Yeah, at Christie's when, and whatnot. When he was alive? Yeah. No, 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 no. This is after. This is oh, like okay. recently, actually. All right, all right, this all is right. like back in like two thousand six and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it just goes to show you, like, people thought he was odd. Neighbors called the cops on him. But this is an artist that is eventually selling his pieces in, you know almost 100 years later, for millions of dollars. It shows you where the art world goes and whatnot. And, you know, you mentioned Francis Bacon. This guy's a precursor to that. You know, yeah. Francis Bacon did a similar thing with, with uh, meat carcasses, and he referred to people as meat slabs. And you, It all comes, it all stems from people like, like, uh, like um, what's his face? I'm sorry, Cezanne, who decided to, to focus on form and shape, and people like Soutine, who decided to focus on the amount of paint you put on, like instead of being true to what you see, be true to how it f- makes you feel. You know, be true to how how what you see, how you can how it makes you feel, and put that on the canvas. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so yeah. Um, final thoughts, gentlemen. 
Fancy Dave, what do you think? You know me. It's good. <laughs> that was OPP. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, Patrick final like, thoughts. It's, it's good. Uh, no, no, it's like no. I feel like I like I I I feel like we've just like said as much as much as, I've already said as much as I can about you know. It's just like it, 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 something I forgot to say. It just reminds me a lot of like of a of a cadaver observation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like yes. you, you get. You get like that sense of a living presence that's dead now, just just due to like the use of color. You know, it's very vibrant and it's very alive, but at the same time, it's dead. And so, I mean, it's just like I don't know. It's a nice example of like visceral expressionism. You know? Yeah. I hear you, man. And like I said, I love how it makes me think about death. It reminds me of an autopsy. You know. Mm-hmm. And I love that in 1924, this guy decided to do a, a carcass of beef. Yeah, so, yeah. Artists are fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, mean, I really hope I don't become one of those guys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> anyways, so um, that's our episode of Art Bros on Shining Soutine. Guys, leave in the comments below if you want us to do another piece of art specifically. Love, subscribe to this channel. If we really love it. we keep making more of these episodes if you did. Um, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the art bros and that's pretty much it so from Mike Fancy Dave and Patrick we'll see you next time here on the art bros till next time then bye